Do you know how to drive an RV? A lot of RV drivers are horrible. Here are the top mistakes RVers make while driving. He needs me to speak man. He needs two sentences. I don't sentences. need you to speak man. I need you just not to speak. Don't let your wife drive. Welcome back to the RV Odd Couple. My name is John. And I'm Mercedes. And long story short, we found freedom, independence, and adventure, oh, RVing yeah. full time. But now we're building a community that believes in God, family, country at Thunder Canyon Campground. Guys, I am so excited for this video topic because we're going to talk all about RV driving. And I'm going to start off by saying something really controversial. 50% of RVers should not be driving. They're horrible drivers. Case in point, 50% should not be driving. This 50% <laughs> should agree. be driving. Agree. Finally, something we agree upon. There's, There's some women that are better drivers than men, this, you know? Yes. Proper training or they've, they've grew up on a farm or they've got experience. Because mm -hmm. the biggest thing you need when you're driving something large is just confidence and experience. Mm -hmm. Remember, we full-timed RV for years. Three years. And we have experience driving motorhomes, towables, they're all slightly different. And this is going to help you drive an RV better. And at the end of the video, I'm going to say the number one most important thing that you have to do before driving in an RV. So stay tuned. All right, let's get started. You okay, ready? Let's go. Let's go. The first mistake that I see RVers make all the time is either driving tired or driving late at night. There's something stressful about driving an RV, it just stresses you out. You can feel it in the shoulders because you're so long and it's just, or if you're going through traffic, if you are tired, you're bound to make a bad decision. So get rest, plenty of rest, have a good solid meal, make sure your checklist is completely done so that it takes the pressure off your brain that you've known, triple check that everything's good, and then you can relax, settle driving, and keep your head in a swivel and drive where you need to go. That's right. Another big mistake I see people making is setting up at night. And the reason that's a big problem is if you're trying to go through a campground that has tight, swervy roads at night, you've never been there before. I mean, if it's easy to get into trouble while driving during the day, it's twice as easy to get into trouble driving well, at night. Well, and to be quite frank, guys, any RV park that's lit up with lights, I don't want to stay at. Yeah. Camping is out in the dark, looking at the stars, having a fire. Yes, campgrounds are going to have some lights for safety. But checking into a campground at night is not a good idea, um, especially if you're fatigued. All right, the next mistake that RVers make while driving is the late lane change. This, And of course, this always happens in a really crowded, crazy traffic metropolis with lots of cars driving in and out, and it's always really stressful, right? Not giving yourself enough time to change lanes is a huge problem. And, and you shouldn't be in the left lane unless you're passing, right? Because how many times... Are people all the way in the left lane and oops, that's your exit and you have a quarter mile to make it and you're 60 feet long and there's a bunch of traffic. You're yeah, not going to make it. frustrates the hell out of me when I see an RV sitting out in the passing lane when he's not passing, just sitting out there. Because what it does is it forces people to pass you on the right. Usually they're going a lot faster than you. Don't stress out if you, if you, if you miss your exit. Now, one of the best things Mercedes was when we were out there driving on the road is she's, she's the best co-pilot in the world. My wife was the bomb. The next mistake applies to the RVing couples. Yeah, <laughs> the husband and wife team that are RVing and you have this dream that you're going to set out in the road and it'll be honeymoon bliss. And the reality is if you and your spouse don't have a good system to work together, common language, agreed upon terms, you guys are in for a world of hurt. Now, we've seen couples <laughs> that are awesome together, man. Great teams. Great teams. You know, they, they speak the same language. They've been practicing together. They got their walkie-talkies. They know what the signals and the signs are that each of them can understand. And then we see the couples that just don't get along that great. And unfortunately for us, Mercedes and I, when it comes to parking, we're not a great team. I prefer to do it by myself Yeah. Um, because we tried it. We did try it try it but mercedes and i don't speak the same language especially when it comes to driving so i prefer to do it by myself here's a couple tips if you're a couple rving and you're trying to work together be a co-pilot never use words like left and right because that means nothing you're going to want to be very specific and say words like driver side passenger side the words you really don't want to say are right so if john says do i make a left and i say right 
Am I saying he should make the left or am I saying he should make a right? Does that make sense? So I want to use words like affirmative, correct. For me, I don't like language. I'd rather have somebody that's leaving me and give me this, this, and how far I have left to go. Yeah. And this, the most important signal of all. And he doesn't need a dissertation on like all of his options. He needs me to speak man. He needs two sentences. I don't sentences. need to speak man. I need you just not to speak and he, just show me signals with your hands. But when I'm talking about when we're in the cab together. Oh, we're in the that cab wouldn't together, work. okay. <laughs> yeah, this wouldn't work in the cab together. And then there's the backing up and the parking. The parking's really important because that's the last thing you do before you set up shop, right? And I can't tell you how many people ruin their vacation because it's just the parking is a nightmare and they're trying to work together. And I've been guilty of this. Remember that one time I was trying to tell him to do too many complicated things. And so he's looking at me in the rearview mirror and I'm going, because I'm trying to tell him to make a right and then kind of pivot. No, 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 no. See why I ask her just to stay quiet? And yeah, let that's why. So when we're driving, I talk, but when he's parking, I just. Well, the truth is, Mercedes stays in the truck while I'm parking. The only person that gets out of the truck when I'm parking my RV is me. Everybody's going to be a little different, okay? I don't like anybody helping me when I'm parking my RV. I like to do it by myself. Mm -hmm. And that's just the way that I am. By the end of our RVing journey, he knew that if I was telling him, hey, this exit's approaching, we need to be turning right soon, I'm saying it calm, I'm giving him a heads up but I'm not telling him how to live his life. Okay guys, the next mistake is not having enough practice. And I'm sorry, but those YouTube channels where they have someone driving and they say, oh, it's easy, it's just like driving a car. It's not, okay? For example, the motorhome, if someone drives by, it kind of does this thing, that makes me nervous. So the more experience you have, the less that kind of thing will make you nervous and the more you know to look out ahead for it. The next mistake that a lot of our viewers make is not having an exit strategy at the gas station. This is a big one because when you're huge, you need to not just get to the spot where you can fill up, but how are you gonna get out? And so the way that I did it is number one, you always look at maps, do a, um, a Google Earth. You can actually zoom in and see what everything looks like in that area. But what I do is I just go super, super slow, ignore anybody who's trying to rush you, super, super slow, and look at the whole area and see where you're gonna go in, what your exit strategy is. Maybe somebody could block you. You wanna to try to avoid that. You should execute your plan the way you lay it out in your head before you ever make a turn into a gas station. That's solid advice. The next mistake is not having a camera system. I credit a camera system for saving our marriage, for <laughs> saving our lives, for saving costless dollars and, and, <laughs> and avoiding accidents like having a camera system because i can't speak for you but all the blind spots that you have as an rv just having an idea of what's around you yeah. like, camera systems are absolutely amazing it was a game changer from us because we do not communicate well i like to do it by myself and there's nothing bad there's nothing better than seeing it with your own eyes so our rv i got a backup camera i've got two side light cameras and i love it because i don't need anybody to help me and i don't need to trust anybody but my own eyes don't trust anybody don't trust anybody <laughs> and one of my pet peeves is when i would pull into a campground and the person checking me and would drive me down to my site show me my say and then attempt to try to help me to park my rig um, i hated that i just I, and typically i would just say listen do you mind i'd like to park this by myself if they insisted i would give them directions on how they could help me i want you to stand there and I want you to tell me this, that. Because the problem is, guys, this takes a while to get the same language with somebody. If you're in a marriage where the communication is good and you guys do have the same signals and they don't cross and cause stress, then, 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 then you can trust that person. But unfortunately for us, I don't have that person in my marriage because my wife doesn't like me telling her what to do. Yeah, I'm obviously the only one that doesn't like being told what to do. <laughs> <laughs> the next mistake is rushing or speeding. Slow and steady wins the race, guys. You know, um, there is no reason to be in a hurry. Um, if you're feeling that social pressure, oh, this is another mistake that people are watching and you're you're kind of in a bind and you're like, oh, I gotta don't get out of here. Don't worry about them, screw them. They don't matter. They don't matter. Who cares what anybody else thinks? Go slow, stop, never be in a hurry, never speed. Drives me nuts when I'm driving down the highway at 55 or 60 in the 
you know, in, in, the, in the cruising lane. And, and a 60 or 70 foot RV will fly by at 80, 85 miles an hour. They're not only putting themselves and their family at risk, they're putting everybody on the highway at risk. Yep. It's a lot of weight and it's going way too fast. Mm -hmm. So the most important thing you can do is just go slow, never be in a rush. Don't worry about peer pressure. Yeah, they okay? don't matter. They don't matter. Take your time. And if you have to, stop every couple of foot and get out and look. Yeah, and sometimes looking for yourself because there were times, see, John and I can't even agree on like what six feet look like, okay? Because I'm like, oh, it's close, it's close. And he's like. She'd scream, stop. And I get out of the truck to go back and I got eight feet left before I hit anything. Baby, I know you're a carpenter, but I don't agree with your version of eight feet. So yeah, getting the same language. He finally said, honey, I just need you to do this. Just do this. In the beginning, guys, we had our walkie-talkies. We tried to do the signals. We tried. It never worked. We tried, we tried so everything. Hard. That I'm not being mean to my wife when I say I prefer to do it by myself. <laughs> it's just our camping trips, there's nothing worse. When we had first started out, when we pull into a campground and we're trying to talk and then we're fighting for the rest of the week That's because one of us hurt each other's feelings. Yeah. Because of something. We, we, because we, of something you said in Just anger. because of something we said in anger. So, yeah. Well... I help you with driving. I'll help you with directions. My Mercedes is the best co-pilot there is next to God for me. Well, the driving She's piece. the best because she we our communication is good there. She gives me warnings, right? So she runs her app on her phone, a different app than I have. Then we have our GPS, mm -hmm. okay? And then we have a paper map. Just in case. Yeah, because <laughs> even some of these GPSs these that you, that you buy that are supposedly for RVs, they've gotten us into a lot of trouble in the past. Mm -hmm. And so I we, we, we cross-reference everything, and my wife was the best at giving me a heads up. Babe, we're going to be turning in one mile. Mm -hmm. Slide over to the right lane, you know? Um, or, or uh, you know, don't miss this left. Mm -hmm. You know, my wife was fantastic. Or, you know, uh, what Just else? Just the, the slow heads up, and I communicated it to him. Not in rush, rush. Like, I would just, you know, this is approaching. Okay, now we're half a mile away. Okay, it's that exit right there. Okay, yeah. next we're doing this. Because what does that avoid? That avoids, you know, the side seat driver when you're driving down the road and somebody goes, ah! And it scares the heck out of you and that's what stresses you out. That's what you want to avoid. If you're helping somebody drive, don't freak them out. Be calm. Calm, way ahead of time and keep your head in a swivel. Yeah, and even if you just made a mistake and you just missed that exit, it looks like we have just missed the exit. Let's find another route. <laughs> Say it calmly. The next mistake that I see a lot of our viewers make is not accounting for the slope or the angle or the bank of the road. So let's say that this is the RV right here, right? And you're driving on a flat surface. Well, you won't miss, you won't hit this tree because this is flat. But all of a sudden, if the road is banked, you're going to hit the tree. Does that make sense? Absolutely. So you need to look not just at the branches up on top, but you also need to be looking at the road and see if it banks and curves and if that's going to impact you hitting something. Mm -hmm. So the only thing that I would point out here, guys, is number one, um, you should be uh, assessing your drive 50 feet, 50 yards out in front of you. You need to know where your position of your RV needs to be. You're not looking at the point that you've got to get around, whether it's the inside point or the outside point. You need to know where you want to put your rig, where your setup is. Getting that rig set up is 90% of make, executing the turn correctly, okay? What Mercedes is saying, if you've got a, a tree and you look at the road and the road does this and it's flat, but then right as it goes down to the tree, there's a curve that runs down from a storm drain. If your tire gets too close into that, okay, the top is going to go into that tree. That we've seen happen many, many, many times. So how do you fix that? Number one, when you adjust your mirrors, always have your mirrors looking at your tires. But remember, have another mirror that can see the entire side of your rig so that you're not only looking at the bottom of the tree in your tire, but you're looking up the side of the RV that it's not leaning in to hit that tree. That actually leads to the next mistake. You need to look further to the future when you're in an RV. Instead of looking 30 yards out when you're in a car, in an RV, you need to be looking 100 yards out, like it's, as far as possible. It's just like professional athletes, right, guys? They know their route. They know their play. They know where their position is supposed to be. Not only are you looking at the turn that you're coming into to set your RV up in the right place to execute that turn, you immediately, once you get there, need to be looking at the next obstacle mm -hmm. because you need to get your rig immediately to a different position to get in there. A couple things you want to be real careful of is your inside point typically is what I call what you're going around, right? Mm -hmm. 
your outside point, the outside of the curb. So you try to position your rig as far outside as you possibly can to give you as much clear as you can around the obstacle. Mm -hmm. Especially in the towables where you, um, you're, what's it called when the wheels pivot? Like you're not going on a single, what's it called? when you have two tire tracks because you're towing. <laughs> no, no. So like the fifth wheel, we had two sets of tire tracks. Mm -hmm. Whereas the motor home, it's only one set of tire tracks. It's a very different, well, it's, it's like a, the just swing. a different toe. It's a swing. You're talking about a tail swing, kicking out the end of a, a yeah. of a class A RV or a class C. Yeah. You got a long tail swing, even with a fifth wheel. Bumper of the RV tube with the wheel bases can be 10, 12, 13 feet. That swing can cause you big problems if you're not paying attention to it. That's exactly what I was saying, but you said it way better than yeah. <laughs> you. You said it in man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> One of the things I absolutely love about our new little 25 footers, Mercedes can drive it uh, um, decently. She can drive it good, <laughs> and and it's it's fun to be able to get get a little rest and enjoy the scenery. Be able to take longer trips because she can help me drive. With the fifth wheel, it never worked for us. We had some of the most stressful trips of our lifetime, me trying to teach Mercedes how to drive in an RV. I would highly suggest that you have a professional train your wife. I can't teach you how to shoot a gun. I can't teach you how to drive a truck. I can't teach you how to drive an RV. I don't like him telling me how to I live my life. I can't teach you how to cook an egg, okay? <laughs> because true. she doesn't care or want to know how I cook. Oh, I want her to cook my egg. I cook them better. My <laughs> way is I have a really better way of cooking eggs. <laughs> Guys, it's the little things when driving your RV that can cause a huge problem. So we're gonna show you a video right now about how not looking far enough ahead got one of these drivers in big trouble. Now, fortunately, John was able to save the day. One of the most stressful things I do now here at Camp Gratitude at Thunder Canyon is bringing somebody that I've never met before down into the premium section of Thunder Canyon Camp Gratitude. It's beautiful down here. It's the nicest park you've ever stayed at. These sites are huge, but it's a little bit tricky because it's on the side of a mountain. So that is one of the most stressful jobs I have is actually taking somebody I don't know and putting them in a spot. So anyways, he, he this guy was really lucky because I was able to jump off my side by side, start screaming to stop, stop, stop. He drove. I warned him about a huge boulder that he drove over and when he slipped off that boulder, it made his whole thing go this way and was an eight foot dr drop off the side of this mountain, which would have been a nightmare. I was able to get him to stop and then jump, run down, get a sawzall, get my saw, cut him loose. What he did was he leaned so much that he went into a railing and he had got, if he had gone any further, he would have scratched the heck or ripped off the whole body of the back of his RV if he had gone any further. So. It worked out good. He must have prayed before we before he left. Yeah, and he needs to buy a lotto ticket because he had luck on his <laughs> he side. He was lucky. Just get a lot of rest. Have a good plan of where you're going. Study the route. Know your RV. Have a checklist. Don't get distracted. Keep your head on a strivel. When Mercedes says always be looking out in front of you, it doesn't mean always be looking out in front of you. Only in front. Be looking around all your mirrors. Use all your tools to know at all times what's on this side, what's on that side, what's behind you, what's up front. My eyes are constantly circling around my RV to know if something happens quickly. I got that lane. I already know it's open. I got this lane. I already know it's open. Give yourself plenty of stop and space out behind you. Stay way back, which is hard in heavier traffic because people love cutting in front of an RV. Just be patient. Go slow, don't speed. So you get your rest, you got your checklist. What did we do? I would ask Mercedes to go around the truck and double check all the work that I had done. Mm -hmm. That's where she was a great partner. And I wouldn't be offended when she'd say, you missed this or you missed that. At the end of it, I was grateful. In the beginning, I was, you know, I, I was a little insulted by it. But yeah. Mercedes was a great partner because always walk around your rig, double check, triple check everything before you start out. Um, and then ultimately, before every trip that we took, Mercedes and I and Sage held hands and we said a prayer for guidance, direction, and protection as we drove to the next location. Mm -hmm. um, and then you can actually relax because there's, not, there's something very special about knowing that God got, got is, is in control and has all of it. Yeah. You do the best you can you know, to, to make it work the best you can and let God take care of the details. And we never thank God in three years of full-time RVing ever had a major accident. Yep. So with that said, that was probably the best advice for the end. <laughs> <laughs> Our, the RV lifestyle is one of the funnest things we've ever done. We loved RVing. We still do love RVing. 
With that said, we'll see you in the next we'll video. We'll see you guys in the next video.